Welcome to First Baptist Church. You're listening to the preaching ministry of Pastor Sherman Burkhead. Please check us out on the internet at fbcboron.org. Hi there, this is Pastor Sherman Burkhead, and this is Grace and Truth, a devotion that is meant to encourage you and to challenge you to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ through a time in the Word and time in prayer. And today is April the 14th, 2020, which means tomorrow is April the 15th, and that would have been the tax filing deadline. Uh, but because of COVID-19, that deadline has been pushed off to July the 15th, which some of you are praising the Lord for. You're not praising the Lord for the circumstances, but you're praising the Lord that you don't have to file taxes until later. Um, in fact, some of you are probably grateful, which brings me to uh, to our first segment, which is we always begin our time together with gratitude. And I want you to know I'm grateful for a lot of things today. I am grateful for friendship. I am grateful for family. I am grateful for the people in this community, but I'm and I'm also grateful for the the people in my life that I can call at a moment's notice and ask for help, and they will drop what they're doing to help. Just like today, we have pe- we have food that comes in from from outside, and people are willing to drop what they're doing and come and help us unload and distribute food. What an amazing group of people we have in our lives! I love this community. And I'm grateful for that. But I'm especially grateful. The thing that I wanted to talk about being grateful today is being grateful for the Word of God. God in His grace. And his mercy by the counsel of his own will decided to reveal himself to us through the written word. And this is important because what what we understand about God is that he is holy. And what does that mean? God being holy means he's completely other than us. He is completely different than us. Right? We might be made in his image, but he is not like us in any way, shape, or form. We are bound by time and space. He is timeless, and he's outside of the universe. We are bound by the limitations of physical life. He is completely immortal. We are bound by, by the constraints of, of the time that we have to live. He is completely eternal. God is different from us in every possible conceivable way to the point that if God had not revealed himself to us, we would never know him. And God decided to reveal himself to us through prophets, but now through the written word. The greatest revelation of God is Christ himself, the incarnate word, but we know about him because of the written word. As Paul says, the Bible, all scripture all scripture is theanustos, or literally the breath of God. And as such, the Bible is a treasure trove for us to live by, and it gives us the truth that we need to know about the gospel and what it means to be saved. The Bible is inerrant, it is infallible, it is inspired, and it is sufficient for for saving knowledge and for life itself. I am super grateful to God for his word. But what about you? What are you grateful for? Lori uh, sent me a message and said she's grateful for her husband and how God has you know, conti- reconciled their relationship and how God continued to grow them together. She's also grateful for her son who uh, is in law enforcement, that God's protecting him as well. Um, and she says she has so many things to be grateful for. And that is the truth. We all have many things to be grateful for. And I would certainly like to hear from you as well. Uh, please let me know what you were grateful to God for in your life. And you can message me here uh, on Facebook or you can email me at fbcboron at gmail.com. Let us practice our gratitude together. But if you have a Bible with you now, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. And the text reads this way. It says, for, this, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And, and what that says in context is, for our sake, us sinners, he, God the Father, made him, God the Son, to be sin who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And this is such an important, important text for us to look at especially on the heels of Easter. You see, in, in America, one of the things that we struggle with is oftentimes is we have sometimes a low view of God and a low view of Scripture and also a low view of the gospel. And, and when you ask people about the significance of Easter, 
people will say that Jesus rose from the dead, and you and and that is absolutely correct. But then if you press them on the issue and say, what does that mean? Well, because Jesus died. Well, why did Jesus die? Well, he died for our sins, which is also correct. And then you ask, was well, that important? They say, well, that's, that's to save us, right? And again, that's that's absolutely correct. Jesus dying for our sins, making atonement perfectly for our sins is a vital, important part of the gospel. But there is still something that most people don't think about when they think of the gospel. You see, um, when it comes to the gospel and what Christ accomplished, uh, Christ did not simply just pay for our sins so that we now are sinless right? He didn't just make us back to even. He didn't want to just a slate, the slate clean where we are now starting with a blank slate. Something else happened. And this is such an important part of the Christian life. This is such an important part of the gospel that we need to understand. Jesus did something else. Jesus lived. He didn't just die for our sins, but he lived also for our salvation. Jesus lived the perfect life that you couldn't live. This is, in, this is, this is vital. He lived the perfect life that you couldn't live so that you could then have a righteousness that you need to stand before God. You see, what you need to be able to have a relationship with God is not just to be negative negative when it comes to sin or, or at zero. You need a positive righteousness, a positive righteous standing before God. And no man has that. Not any man in all of history has that since the fall except for Christ. And here's the beautiful thing, is on the cross then, there's an exchange that happened. This is what we see in our text, that God made him to be sin, who knew no sin. That on the cross, Jesus Christ, his account was credited with our sin. Even though he did not sin, it was not his own sin. Our sin then was given to him or credited to him as if it was his own. And he died to pay for that sin, but also... He gave back to us what's credited to our accounts, what is given to us, his righteousness. That in him we might become the righteousness of God. We are righteous now because of Christ. And please understand, uh, we're not righteous because of what we're doing. We're not righteous because we're good people. We're not righteous because we're Christians. We are righteous because what Christ has done for us, he has given us his righteousness. In fact, some people say it like this, we are clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Another way of saying that is that when God looks upon us, he doesn't see us, he sees Christ's righteousness. And that is what we need to understand about the gospel. The gospel isn't just the washing away of sin, but it's an adding to us us something we couldn't earn. And so when we talk about the gospel, we talk about the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not just his death. It's not just his resurrection, but it's also his life. Hear me. Jesus lived the perfect life that you couldn't live. He fulfilled the law you couldn't fulfill. And even more than that, he walked in your shoes to identify with you and to know you and to be close to you and to be intimate with you and to fully understand you. What a, what a marvelous Savior we have. What a gracious God we have that he came personally into the world on a rescue mission to bring you home. What you need to do is repent and believe the gospel. That's it. Turn to him in faith and receive him as your savior and your Lord, and you were saved. Your sins are forgiven, and his righteousness is credited to you. So again, with that understanding, let me read this text one more time for you. It's one worth memorizing. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What a beautiful, incredible truth. I hope that encourages you today. I hope that challenges you to grow in your relationship with Christ today. Because if you're in Christ, you are righteous before God. Glory. Hallelujah. Let us pray for our community. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you so much for your mercy. We thank you for this truth. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you for the people in this town. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our neighbors. We thank you, Lord God, for the generosity of those who who are among us. Father, we can spend all day, every day, just praising you and lifting up all the things that we're grateful for. We have so much, Lord God, by your 
general grace to be grateful for, but then specifically we can be grateful to you for your word and grateful for Jesus Christ who has made a way. He has torn the veil. He has opened the way for us to have a relationship with you, not just absent of sin, but positive in righteousness because of Christ. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for this community. We pray right now, Lord God. I want to I want to start, Lord, by praying for all the law enforcement in in Kern County, the Kern County Sheriff's Department. Um, I spoke to somebody today and I asked, how can we pray for you? And he said, just pray for us all. Uh, we have so much going on. There's so many things happening and there's so many things that we're having to deal with. And I, and so Lord, I'm just, I, I come to you right now and I'm praying for every deputy sheriff in Kern County right now that we would agree as Christians for their safety that you would protect them, that you would bless them, that you would watch over them, that you would keep them safe from COVID-19, that you'd keep them safe from uh, from accident, you'd keep them safe from uh, from harm, that, Father, you would help them, Lord, to grow in their, their relationship with you, that you would strengthen them and help them to be a light that shines in the darkness. What a difficult job they have right now. What an impossible job it seems. And I pray, Father, you would bless and protect them and watch over them and give them strength. Father, we pray for those who have been affected by this virus, that you would heal them. We pray that they would receive the medical care that they need. We pray for the frontline medical workers, um, the ambulance workers, the doctors, the nurses, the people, the orderlies, anybody that has anything to do with the medical profession. We pray, Lord God, you would keep them safe, keep them protected, help them, Lord God, to do their job, help them to be loved and appreciated. And I pray, Father, for uh, the essential workers who uh, are doing their jobs, working during this time, that you would keep them safe from harm as well. I'm praying, Lord God, also for those who are affected financially, that you would meet their needs, help them to pay their bills, Lord, help them to um, to move forward, Lord God, with their life, that you'd provide for them because you are our provider, ultimately, Father. I pray, Father, um, for, uh, for, the, for this community, that you would protect it as well, I pray, Father God, for revival to break out in this community. I pray, Lord God, that the gospel would go around the world. I pray, Father, for uh, our missionaries who are working around the world in in Russia and Mexico and Honduras um, and in China and in Pakistan, Father, that you would be with them, that you would strengthen them, that you would help them, Lord God, to continue to proclaim the gospel. I pray, Lord God, for the families that are that are here. I pray, Father, that that. Now is a time that your church would rise up and show just how beautiful and glorious you are, that we'd be the preserving influence you're calling us to be and a light that points everybody who are in the darkness to Jesus Christ. Father, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So with that, um, just so you know, we're going to continue to live stream uh, for here for the next few weeks as we figure out what's going to be happening soon. Uh, it is our goal, it is our aim that the moment that we can open the doors back up to have regular service and start having Bible studies again, that we are going to do that. Um, I will say that there are probably going to be some changes in the schedules when it comes down to things that we had planned for the summertime, like vacation Bible school and um, some of the other events that we had planned. We're hoping to minimize the impact on that, but as it sits right now, we just can't really make any hard and fast decisions on on what we're going to keep or what we're going to push off. But please just you know stay connected to us and we'll keep you updated to the best of our ability. But with that, I want you to know that every single day, I am praying for you and I'm thinking about you. You guys are so important to us that, that I just want you to know that you are not alone, that you are not um, going through this by yourself. And that right now there are people in our community and people in our church family who are lifting you up before our sovereign Lord, who are, who are lifting your name up before God, praying for you. And we want to just let you know that if, if you need something, don't hesitate to call us here at the church at 760-762-5149 or email us at fbcborn at gmail.com. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. We are here to help, uh, at least just to let you know that we are here um, to, to, to hear your voice and to, to love on you and counsel you. But with that being said, please know that you were loved, you were prayed for, you are deeply missed. We look forward to seeing you soon. Grace and peace.
You've been listening to the preaching ministry of Pastor Sherman Burkhead, a production of First Baptist Church in Boron, California. Our website address is fbcboron.org. And would you please consider partnering with us financially as we work to share the hope and the gospel of Jesus Christ with our community and our world.